Hello, friends and enemies, heroes and villains. Welcome to Epic Realms. Today's guest is an Epic Realms alumni, author of the Max Abaddon series, the Sinking Man series, and the new Descending World series, starting with Asher's Fall. Please welcome the one and only Justin Leslie back to Epic Realms. Justin, thanks for coming back. I appreciate you coming back. Of course, of course, man. Thanks for having me. I guess I didn't scare everybody off first time around, so I appreciate <laughs> well, you having me back. <laughs> I was like sitting there, I was like, I really need to have, Justin's had a lot of stuff. It's been a while. It's literally been yeah. two years. We, we we were talking about that earlier today. It's been two years since you were on the podcast show. And I know yep. last January, you <clears throat> and uh, Hunter and Luke Daniels all came on and we did that Dead by Daylight thing. And, oh, yeah. And so that was kind of fun <laughs> as well. Just to just for the people that are listening, you want to kind of tell us kind of how that came to be because I feel that that was like all these weird pieces just fell into place kind of overnight, and there was a lot of people talking to a lot of other people, and until one day it was like all of us were together on the same page. From your side, your point of view, kind of how did that come together? Because that was fun. Yeah. So we literally so Hunter's a big video game guy, and I am when time permits. Right. I'm, right. I grew up in the '90s and when I get a chance to jump on a video game and Hunter and I've been playing dead by daylight, which if you haven't played it, it's highly addictive. It's nerve wrenching. It's actually one of the few games that gets me on the edge of my seat when I'm playing it. It's multiplayer. You get chased by all these like monsters you see on TV and stuff. And uh, we were just kind of going through it. And uh, we talked to Luke a little bit about playing some games. And then I believe you saw us on there and it just all, we all figured out we were going to get together and do some kind of event with it, right? We all need to get on here because it's comic gold. Because I mean, you know, you get Luke Daniels, which is you played a video game and you're hearing Luke Daniels talk, which is of course just amazing. Right. And then you get Hunter Blaine's sense of humor and then you get me just <laughs> not even knowing what's going on half the time. And uh, we played a couple of times. It was just super fun. And uh, I just, I don't know, it all just kind of worked out, but it's a, uh, it's funny because when you get on there, Hunter, he'll absolutely yeah, he he takes the game seriously. He does, and he does. Uh, but yeah, it was super it was super fun. And then we all worked it out uh to come on and play with you and uh to go through it. But yeah, I mean it was just a combobulation of everybody getting together and Luke and 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 myself and Hunter and, and everybody, we were all working on all these different projects at the same time as yeah. well. So I mean we were just burning the midnight oil and it just sparked and came up and worked out. So it was super fun. I want to do something like that again. Yeah. Um, maybe something a little calmer than Dead by Daylight. <laughs> well, maybe we can figure something out that everybody uh, will want to do. And we can do it. We can even do, we can even play off stream. I know, I know Hunter plays the Dead by Daylight yep. off, off of stream as well from time to time. And mm -hmm. I, every time he's on there, I'm in the middle of doing something. I was like, oh, I should pop in and say hi and play around or two. Yep. And there was a couple yep. times I saw you in there with him. I was like, yeah, I, I got to get over there. So, yeah, well, it's that, but also I'll tell you what Diablo four, I know a lot of people are rocking that. Of course, I'm a big Diablo guy growing up through yeah. it, but um, that's how I learned to get in and hack games back at Diablo two. And I was putting coins in, I'm a total geek from back in the day, obviously. But uh, yeah, I know he's been playing that. I've been playing that too a little bit. So, um i was super excited about that coming out little you know trying to work through it right now but yeah right yeah well it's one. not like you're Clear not some busy diamonds. doing all kinds of stuff have you done a lot of dead by daylight since uh yeah a little bit um it's one of those things where it'll be nine o'clock at night and i'll be sitting in my office and i'll have discord up or something you know sometimes i turn it off sometimes i leave it on and i'll get a message like hey get on get on dead by daylight you know and i'll jump on there but it's been a little bit yeah, yeah we We've jumped on there at good times. We got a little him, Luke, and, and myself have a little group text every once in a while. We'll shoot something out, but it's been a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody's been so crazy busy lately, yeah. which is a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah, you guys yeah, are yeah. all just right. It's really been fun for me to watch all of you, like you and Hunter specifically. Obviously, Luke is yep. Luke Daniels, uh, but watching yep. you guys because I told people um, recently, like I messaged you. It was after your first book came out, and. Luke had read a little snippet on his thing and I was like, oh, that's really awesome. And this was had nothing to do with the podcast. I just messaged yep. you on the side. And I was like, yep. I love I love your stuff. I was introduced through this or whatever. And you and I just started chatting. And I think it was like four months yep. later. I was like, hey, you want to come on my podcast? Yeah. And so it's been really <laughs> sure. cool to watch watch not just you and you grow, but watch your library grow and watch yep. the the breadth of the characters grow and you know your growth amongst other authors and your interactions with them also grow it's just been really cool um yep. really cool to watch that grow over the last three years so yeah yeah is there anything else you do besides you know obviously 
playing games sometimes to, to just wind down or to chill out you get in and you're like i just need to chill and like turn my brain off sure yeah let Any me introduce you to russell's 10 years reserve um <laughs> this is <laughs> um i do so i play music obviously got some guitars in the background um really when i need to just unplug my brain like i said i don't play video games a lot but um like when the hogwarts legacy game came out i went and played it until i was done diablo 4 came out i played a fallout game comes out i'm gonna play it um but really i like playing music um i'm awkwardly good at it which is really kind of weird so i got a lot of people in my family my sons and stuff are you know musically talented but i really to unplug and just really unwind i'll plug up a backtrack and i will just rock out i have a studio in the house as well but it's over there in the garage but yeah uh, that's kind of the thing man i just like to uh to unplug and kind of let the brain because i still have a nine to five job i'm still yeah you know, doing 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 what i do but yeah to your point man it's been um you know it's been a long ride the last couple of years you know it's funny i was watching I, man I, I keep watching like you know your reporters and these folks on your podcast i was like holy cow like because you were resetting your podcast if memory serves right and man, I mean, some, I get on these folks, they probably, they might watch this or not, but man, a lot of people you have on the show are like people I like used to read their stuff when I was younger and right. stuff. I'm old, so take that how you will <laughs> when I say younger. But uh, yeah, it's super, it's super fun, man. Um, and every author that I've met, every, everybody along the way has been super great. So, I mean, it's just been, it's been a ride. It has been a ride. <laughs> and one that I'm learning how to work, work through right now. So. Yeah. Well, and you're just, you're so active on you know, social media and Facebook, and you're always keeping your audience up to date about all yep. the, like, we've got this coming up. And even if it's only been like a week or two, you're like, here's this one little snippet, you know, I got two chapters done on this thing and one yep. on this and all the other stuff, you know, so people aren't like, well, you didn't mention, you didn't mention what's going to happen with the Sinking Man series. Does that mean you're done? Yep. You're like, so you mention all of those all the time, yep. just to be like, we're still on track for this. Nothing's changed, yeah. but we're still on track just to keep people up to date on all that. Is that hard to sit there and, you know, kind of sometimes every week repeat yourself for some of that stuff? Or is it just like, that's just what it is and you enjoy doing it? <laughs> it man, so that's a, that's a crazy, crazy question. And it's one I ask myself all the time, because sometimes I feel like I'm being repetitive, right? Um, for for people that don't know, I I've, I've been an indie author pretty much the majority of what I was doing. You know, obviously Luke Daniels gracious enough to take me on, as well as Jarrett Lee Master. But recently, I've kind of gone into some traditional publishing lanes, where I'm getting into the military sci-fi stuff, and which is a whole other thing, which has been insanely fun to write, by the way. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's one of those things where I want people because there's we, we do have a core group of people, you know, right? That 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 I get emails from, and you know, you 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 hear things from constantly, and it's like, no, I, Max Abaddon's still here. He's just he's busy right now, but this is what he's doing. And then like the Sinky Man series, which is I, I've always said this, it's my um, it's the redheaded stepchild, but but it's the one that's probably going to shine the brightest one day, right? So, um. It's one of those things where I let people know it's changing a little bit. Where I went from novellas, I might be going to full blown novels. There's some stuff going on with that right now, and there's a reason why we're not hearing a lot from it, right? Yeah. So, because <laughs> when it comes back, it's going to come back screaming. So, same thing with Max Abaddon, which I'm probably about four weeks away from wrapping up the next book, okay. getting onto it. So, there was a quickly as possible. We were talking a little bit about your social media, and every once in a while, you'll post something that's just you know something maybe something your dog did or oh, whatever yeah. but there is this one that i i distinctly remember and i need you to tell the story what is the story about the lady that randomly walked up to you and just dropped off a full bottle of jack daniel's honey uh and, and when you were in vegas what is the story tell us what happened here because i saw that it's like there's got to be more to this what is going on you know this is going to be one of those things where I, it, it just kind of abruptly ended at the you know at the at the point where the picture was taken so I'm at Vegas a couple of weeks ago. I'm having breakfast. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. I'm in the lobby. I'm with a buddy of mine. Is that like your hotel or something? Yeah, this is at Man we were at Mandalay Bay. Okay. And um we're sitting there having breakfast. And a buddy of mine, uh Jason, he's from Texas, we're just sitting there doing our thing. And this lady walks up, uh, she's like, Excuse me, do you guys like she she has nothing in her hands? She's like, Do you like Jack Daniels? And I'm like, Well, looking at her like I don't like my buddy, we're looking at each other. We're like making sure there's no cameras around or anything weird. We're like, uh, yeah, we like, I mean, we like Jack Daniels. It's, it's good. She's like, oh, 
would you like some Jack Daniels? And it's Vegas, right? So you always got to question people's intentions. You right. know, where is this going to go? Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm a little bit more reserved. I'm actually on the phone on a conference call, too, by the way, on right. East Coast time. So I'm actually talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> and so my buddy's like, you know, he's like, hell yeah, like Jack Daniels, who don't? You know, he's big taxes, you know, great big personality, great guy. And uh, she's like, okay. So she literally pulls out a gallon of Jack Daniels honey and is just like, Cool. here you go we're like <laughs> okay she's like enjoy it we're like okay that's for sure. like it was like a standoff we're all just looking at each other i was like i don't know what's about to happen and then she just walks off weirdest thing like seven eight o'clock in the morning if anybody on here hasn't experienced vegas it's one of those things that will happen to you in las vegas but make sure you're careful that's all i gotta say my buddy apparently drank some of it. I was like, I wouldn't drink that, but he did. So he's still alive, by the way. So well, that's that's good. So that's, have you tried? Have you maybe not that specific bottle, but have you tried the Jack Daniels honey? I have actually, uh, which was even funnier because she pulled it out. I was like, oh, it's actually, I really like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, it's really good. Yeah, Jack Daniels honey on a little bit of ice, just just straight by itself is actually really good. Um, oh, okay. If you like bourbon or whiskeys. And Normally, stuff. I'm not, but some you know certain brands are types that I I can get into. There's a Woodford Reserve that I really like. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a nice one. And my wife, funny enough, my wife is more of the whiskey you know whiskey person than me i'm more of the you know the fancy expensive rums sort rums. of person but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but again we we've talked about that before uh uh and you're gonna definitely have to show me if i ever get down your way show me some of those specialty local uh rum yeah. locations down there. so you would like you would like this for sure 100 percent. so saint augustine obviously where max abaddon's base is the oldest city in the United States. Right. And it's such an eclectic place. Um, and I talked about this last time when we talked, but they have these bars. They have a couple of really interesting bars where you don't really order a drink. You just go in and it's these mixologists and they're just like, you just like, hey, can I get a drink? And they're just like, okay. They just make these like crazy drinks for you. It's a little bit of like one of those like niche things that they do. Yeah. But they do a really good job at it. They're like, you like rum? You're like, well, yeah, I like rum. And then they'll just, they'll pull it out and just work through an entire thing. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's one of those things where they actually take time and effort to put into it and mix stuff up. But man, we, you would enjoy you would enjoy Saint Augustine. You can wear your pirate outfit and yeah. get on a pirate ship and raise cane. I've done it. I've got some pictures of that. Just don't. <laughs> I'll just have to come down during one of the pirate festivals and do that, and then you won't. They even, do. You won't even recognize me. You'd be like, "Who's this guy?" It's yeah. like you know me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Saint Augustine. I mean, they literally they have the uh, the pirate museums down there. And they had the pirate torture museum, and I'm like, how many ways can pirates torture people? I guess. And then I went, and I was like, okay, I guess a lot. A lot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well. Although I don't know how you know, they display keel hauling; they'd have to haul in an entire ship, and I don't. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm with you. It, it's a pretty interesting place, though. But they have, um, I mean, that's kind of their claim to fame, right? So, um, but yeah, you would you'd probably very much so enjoy Saint Augustine. I yeah. could I could see you rocking out. That I would, city. I, would. I, love, well. I love all that kind of stuff. especially like when you get historical stuff like that like museums and whatnot i mm -hmm. i really enjoy seeing those we had uh we actually had a pirate tour thing come through our museum system here and i was there for like three weeks and i, I like i bought i'm gonna buy a season pass for the museum just so i can go there like four or five times yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure you would love that city they literally um I, I'm one of those people, and I don't know if you share this interest or not, but like the, when you go to some cities, some people are like, I don't want to do the touristy stuff. I'm like, dude, sometimes the touristy stuff is the funnest thing you're going to go do. Go do the pirate tour in St. Augustine. Dude. It's a blast. It's fun. Right. They stop at all these places, and I don't know, man. It's super fun, though, to do it. But yeah, if it's um, that's your job, man, that place is absolutely on top of it. I do like doing some touristy stuff, but I like taking – so there's your – like. This is the biggest, this is, this is the stuff that everybody does. And then yeah. there's these things that people don't know about that should be touristy, but the locals yeah. know about, but they don't do. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. the yep. kind of stuff that I like. Like, this is the weird, like, this is the weird tour that nobody knows about, about, you know, the, this haunted wing of the, whatever, you know, that yeah. has had this story <laughs> that, you know, most people don't know. That's the kind of stuff that I find really cool or going around. Sometimes we'll go on a trip and we'll just look up, look for like estate sales just so we can go into these really old, really cool buildings yeah. that have been yeah, around yeah. forever. Uh, so yeah, I, I like doing some of the lower key, not so mainstream touristy stuff. Yeah. I, I still like doing regular touristy stuff too. But. Yeah. I like the cheesy cheese. Well, if I'm, to the point, if I'm going to the touristy, I'm going to the super cheesy stuff because I'm going to have a good time. 
I'll turn it into a good time. But Savannah is one of those cities where it has a lot of that stuff. Okay. Where you can they, they you can go into the older buildings and do some of the stuff that's kind of not like normal and stuff. But Savannah is a super fun city like that. Anyways, I spent a lot of time in Savannah, by the way. So I'm surprised <laughs> I haven't read a book about Savannah. But well, maybe maybe somebody's gonna just have to take a trip over through that neck of the woods at some point. Yeah, 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 man. It's it's a different part of the world if you have never been to Savannah, Georgia. So the last time you were on the show, we mentioned it was August 9th, twenty twenty one. You mm -hmm. have had two, and soon we'll have three Max Abaddon books that have released since then. Yep. So there've been there've been some twists and turns, and at that time we really didn't like we didn't really give away anything even in the first book. We kind of gave the mm -hmm. the the topic the idea of yep. what the world was like and kind of how that happened. Uh, since that time, have you been a lot more open to talking about some of those early things to try and get people into them because you're so far ahead, yeah, or are yeah, you still for... do you still like? try and not give away too much about those those stuff that's already been released for a while no it, it's good it's good at this point and, and i think a lot of that is um you know the series while it's consecutive it does follow an overarching theme um there's so many intricacies in it um it, it, i would it would do me a disservice not to talk to him at this point right because right. i'm the person with them all in my head right where i know where all these little tendrils are going books from now and all that good stuff so no no i i, I get into them now and i get asked questions sometimes i clarify some things um you know that's one of the things when you get six seven books into a series too um i have to go back and re-listen to things and reread things sometimes to make sure that um you know I'm, I'm making sure they're right but the biggest thing that drives me crazy as an author is there's I love all the characters that I write. I love every single one of them. Um, and and I'm always like, man, I'm I'm bummed out, but there's no place in this book for planes drifter or something weird, or there's no place for this person in this book. Um, but I'm like, man, I I, I make little notes like I promise I'm gonna you you know, there's the it's coming, it's coming, right? So yeah. Yeah, but yeah, to point, man, it's uh, at this point, man, there's no, it's pretty wide open. I don't think there's much to keep behind the curtain at this point with them. So. When you when you started introducing the the Planes Drifters band members who are back row, kind of background characters, but mm -hmm. they've become, at the beginning, they were just this band that he listened to, mm -hmm. but now they're very significant uh, role, yeah. not just in the character's life, but in the world overall. Was yep. that the plan all along, or did that just you just needed somebody to fill that role, and you're like, this would be really cool if it was these guys that he looks up to? So that, there's a combination of things, and I could show you. I actually have some. Uh, you want to see something really cool? Sure. Somebody made a Plains Drifter book uh, uh, cover. Oh, cool. nice. Hold on. For those listening to the podcast, Justin's stepping away real quick to go and get the uh, go and get the image. Ah. So if you guys are listening, to this get on my podcast, ears back on watch here. The live stream. Yeah. So check this out. Somebody made a Planes Drifter uh, album cover. All right. Pull it back just a little bit so people can see. A little bit more centered. Because I've got you cropped to a square. There you go. All right. There that's kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. So we have. So you've got like this fan? skeleton thing for those that are listening to the audio. It's like a, a skeleton with a cloak. It's very, very metal. It's very heavy yeah. metal. And yeah, Planes yeah. Drifter. And it's almost like a... Yeah, that is almost like a... Um, it's, uh, like a like a Lovecraftian feel to it without the tentacles, like this undead yeah. guy with the glowing sun. It is really creepy and yeah, really awesome. So yeah, we have a, a super cool super cool guy came down. He joined us at our our con last year. So I changed the subject on you, but it, I think it's all kind of melted yeah, together yeah, yeah. with the planes drifter. Um, and he came down, and man, I keep telling him, I'm like, man, you've got he 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 literally travels places where books are written and does tours so he literally came to saint augustine when we were all together and did a tour of all the locations from the max abaddon series and, oh, he, and he made cool. this which is super cool and i'm keeping it because we are going to there's we've been taught i've been, talked to luke before last year about it we've all been busy but there's you know a, a really cool rock opera would be cool if we actually did music and had planes drifter singing an album yeah. and this stuff so um but yeah so planes drifter was something that Max Abaddon was almost overly musical based, right, for a little bit, just because of my background, like music yeah. and all that stuff. But um, I think one of the key takeaways is <laughs> it's, it's so much wrapped up in that question. There is. I've got a couple of offshoot, offshoot series that are going to come. There's a three book series that I have planned, um, and it's Plane Drifters. It's or it's literally like 
Scooby-Doo plane drifter, them going doing concerts and solving a mystery that happens while they're in yeah. this town or, lo or location. So, but they, they were always going to be a piece of it, but I think they did become a bigger piece. Obviously there's like some relation, you know, there was some, some, some relation in there between the members of the band and um, they're going to have a big part to play in the next couple of couple of books coming up. So yeah, I'm excited to write them back in coming up. So yeah, they've definitely evolved from beginning to, to now. Yeah. Another question yeah. I had for you, and Sorry. not maybe not everybody I'm knows it, because if they're not following you on Facebook, by the way, go follow them on Facebook. Uh, you had a little contest to put a character in the book mm -hmm. earlier I did. on. Now, now, I don't know for fact, but I'm assuming after the fact that it was the troll. It is the troll. It 100%. is the troll. Yep, 100%. So you want to tell us kind of how that came to be and how that how that conversation went after like the person won that and your kind of conversation and kind of how that character evolved and got put in there because i know afterwards you're like this character is i'm going to keep using this character because you enjoyed it so much yeah the, yeah in troll so um th there's a little bit of sadness to the story but i think a little bit of bit of sunshine right so we had the contest and we have a core group of people obviously that that, that get involved in these things i actually not to detract from it but i have literally i have a contest package that i've sent to canada for canada three times that i've got sent back to me oh man i don't know why and this person's probably going crazy because I have all this stuff I keep sending them. But anyways, so we have people that get involved in this stuff a lot. And um, his brother passed away. And it, the character was completely built around his brother who who passed away during 2020, you know, when everything was going on. Yeah. And um, we had a, a lot of back and forth about what his brother really liked to do and what are some what are some personality pieces in his brother. And, uh, you know, his brother was really into photography, for example, right? So um, The Crystal King, which is which is just such a fun book, uh, we took Ian the Troll, and he obviously takes pictures, and uh, he sends people through a gate, and he always takes pictures of them, and he doesn't remember words and stuff, and he's always kind of all over the place. But um, it was absolutely based on his brother, so now his brother, he'll always be able to visit his brother in the books, and we're going to keep going with Ian the Troll. He's not going away um matter of fact he's getting ready to have a little fun in uh the the next book coming up so the gates to perdition he'll he'll have a role to play in there too but um it was a good conversation uh just really really good fan heartfelt um you know way to kind of commemorate somebody and i like putting people in our books my books anyways but for me uh that was something where we could you know we could keep his brother you know he's always going to be able to pick that up and remember his brother and yeah Listen to Luke Daniels do Ian the Troll, and he does it really well. And uh, but that was that was the story behind that and how the conversations went. And uh, you know, you always want to do somebody right with something like that, right. you know. So a little bit of sadness, but a total positive thing because we got this great character commemorates, you know, celebrates his brother's life. So you know, that also um, reminds me of in these two books, you kind of. And I'm changing subjects just a little bit here, but you, yeah. in those books, you start to finally kind of get to see Petro's world and where he comes yep. from and yep. kind of the dichotomy of how that world works. And it's, yeah. it's at the beginning, Petro was the odd person out. He was the one in the place mm -hmm. that was unfamiliar and didn't know how the world works yep. and he didn't know what cereal was and he didn't know things and now the roles <laughs> get to be reversed on max where yep. he doesn't know what's going on he doesn't understand the dichotomy and you know he's the odd one out and petro's kind of the one in charge and i thought that that was really cool yep can you walk us through how you made the decision that you wanted to do that and like exactly what you wanted to like get out of some of those scenes yeah, so that's interesting. I always remember, I always, I always think of Gaseous when I think about the Pixies and the Pixie King and everybody. Um, when, when I first wrote Petro and I first kind of uh, went through that, and I feel like Petro's a part of me these days, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's why I miss writing Max Abaddon, obviously, man. Um, you know, you miss you miss those characters. You want to get back and give them a voice. I could talk a little bit more about that. But, um, you know, I, I, I always had this feeling that Petro, you know, if you go back to the first book and, and how he was first introduced and he was locked in there and he was always the one trying to get to Earth and cross over to this other realm, he was not really an outcast, but he was different. You know, he was cast a little differently than the rest of the Pixies. And 
he, he, I think you kind of picked up on some of that. You see his brothers are and his family was kind of integrated into the royalty of the pixie, you know, the pixie community. So, yeah. um, you know, you see him at this kind of like, you know, he's trying to borrow like iPads to have dates with other pixies that are earth pixies that have been there forever and all this goofy stuff. But back home, that's not really the case. Right. So, um, I always wanted him to have that. <clears throat> I don't even say I wanted him. He just kind of had it right. He, he was more than just the, the sum of what he, his actions to a point. But if you pay attention to everything Petro does, he always is, um, he's never afraid. He's like Petro the Brave. He's got all these titles. In my last book, I think I gave him like 20 titles where he rattled it off to the seat. You know, he's yeah. like, I'm Petro the Slayer of the Eye and the Keeper of the Gaseous. And just it just goes yeah. on for like five minutes, right? So, um, but that was kind of the point of the now we, he's a prince. You know, we, we we come to find out how he's set up and he's, he's now on the uh, council and He's got some fancy robes, which I don't know if I've translated this right, but um, I don't know if you like cheesy 80s wrestling. I don't know if you're a fan of the old old cheesy 90s and 80s wrestling. Yeah, I um, grew up on it. Yeah, that's I, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, if I knew you're a fan, now, now we're going to change all the questions. We're just going to throw this away. We're just going to talk about wrestling for the rest of the show. I yeah. got a funny story about Mr. Wonderful oh, okay. uh, from back in the day. So you, the old cheesy like capes with their names on the back so yeah. if you pay attention how i wrote and that's the way he's got his cape now and he's got his name on the back of it and he's just kind of that's the way i envision him when he's walking into these council meetings like a wrestler back in the 90s or 80s you know so <laughs> um but yeah Initial Petro, embroidered on his boots <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. when i'm writing him when he's doing things that's exactly what's going through my mind so um but yeah that's how petro i i really like I said, you you know, you write a series from A to Z. It always changes. The road changes, obviously. The Last Bite was a book that took its own course, which is actually, I think, some of the best work I've written in the from an overall, like, structural standpoint, if you, you know, follow through the story. But, um, yeah, I mean, I always knew Petro was going to take a certain path, and I still know a path. He, you know, he's got a big journey ahead of him, right? Yeah. So that's a well, very we long-winded talked, answer to your question. I figured we, we talked – Quite a bit about Petro last time you were on and kind of comparing yeah. him to other sidekick characters in a bunch of other books. We had a Super long, important. I think we talked 10 15 minutes on the last show about it, and I was like, it's so interesting how much things have changed in just two years for some yep. of these characters and where they're going and yep. how they're going. Um, and so I just I was like, we got to talk about Petro again, and I just again mm -hmm. going into that world and seeing his world for the first time. And yep. Max not having a clue and making mistakes constantly, be like, you can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. And him like being Max Avedon and be like, well, I'm going to do it anyhow. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> Man, I, I, I'll ruin something for you a little bit when you kind of go down that path. But I think everybody kind of picks up what happened at the end of the last book. And, and Max right now obviously is in a pretty, you know, hot place, yeah. you know. And um, I – this is easy without spoiling too much. I thought it would be hilarious to enter for him to be in the under, which is hell, for Max to be in hell and meet every single one of Bo's ex girlfriends and relationships, <laughs> no matter what or who they were. On his on his journey through hell, so I, it's 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 a funny thing. Um, it's it's interwoven into this next book. It's a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of a little a uh, little bit of a spoiler, but. Um, if you ever wondered what Bo, Bo was like back in the day, you're about to find out all the trouble he used to get into. So nice. I just got done writing a very interesting um, scene with uh, Max Bo and a witch that apparently pet, that uh, Bo used to date that's, uh, you know, warts and all yeah. kinds of craziness and stuff. So that's going to be hilarious. Did you when you're going through and you're building some of these, because obviously um, he's starting to see some of these other worlds now in person. Yeah. How are you balancing you know, the, the dichotomy of, you know, pantheons and how all of that works. Now that you're getting into the nitty gritty at the beginning, it was kind of touched upon, but now like yeah. you actually have to build how they interact and how those worlds, you know, how the world of Hades works and, you know, Hades being yeah. Greek and, you know, you know, Satan and all of that being more mm -hmm. Christian or the Fey world, you know, all of that and kind of balancing that out without necessarily just, doing stuff that's already been done before yeah so you i think i mentioned this before um but you, there, there's come to a point where you 
you try to do your own thing, but it, it, a lot of things, it's like music. A lot of things have already been done, right? Yeah. So a lot of things have been done in books at, at various levels. So, um, you know, some interesting things that aren't even kind of in the genre of like some of the books, urban fantasy books that I like. You start looking in the mortal instruments, you start getting down the tunnel of some of those books where, you know, um, not not to wax too poetic, but where, you know, being God's a nine to five job, being the devil's a nine to five job, you get into good omens, you get into all these other different books that have done things so many different ways, American gods, and you just yeah. look at everything and how it's all, every, everybody kind of jumbles it all together. But for me, I look at it as everybody's kind of a compliment to everybody else, right? It's just like um, everybody has their own place, right? So I took it back to Tarim where it was a planet, basically a place where everything was, right? Where us here on Earth, we look at all that stuff as, okay, this, that, the other. It's because it was all built upon, right? It's all based on something that was this place that was conceptual, but it's still a thing, right? So. I'm not going like the Marvel multiverse on anybody, but you start getting into some of the, you know, like the dimensional things and, and, you know, I don't want to get overly religious with it, obviously. Right. But I look at it like, you know, like Devin, it's a nine to five job for me. He's trying to keep all the bad things kind of under check. He's like, yeah, I got this job. I want to keep everybody nice and cool. Um, Richard Cadre with Sam and Slim series, which is excellent. Um, he really approached that in such an interesting way. Um, that it, it doesn't push by writing in that direction. Like you said, something that's already been done. But you, all, I see that figure where it's not this omnipotent evil person. He's like, oh, shit, I got a nine-to-five job I got to go to tomorrow. Yeah. I got to show up and make sure, you know, Bell doesn't get up and go do something crazy, you yeah. know, so he's all, you know, so. Um, but that's the way I look at it. They all work together. Like, um, And I have that everywhere, that whole, like, third realm. Right. And that's where I play that out. To answer your question yeah so the everywhere is where that middle place where all the wild things are where you have the pantheons and the hades and they work in conjunction you know with the, all the other gods and stuff so it's just one big machine of things working and you know it's hard to point it's hard not to not some of my favorite authors man i right. and writers and um it's hard not to have them integrated into what you do a little bit you know exactly, um, exactly. like kevin Hearn, iron druid series he does a really really good job at that yeah. um there's some parts of it where um obviously like i think oberon's like the ultimate sidekick i think the one thing i will always say about kevin Hearn, i would love to meet him one day and talk to him um is literally um you know oberon is the way that you ride a sidekick it's the way that you do it right so many people even huge characters like right people that i know i they don't always nail it that way right mm -hmm. but I like it when the sidekick takes the show. But that's well, it's, it's a nice little way to get the character to tell story because, like, you can have yeah. your main character explain yeah. something, or you can have the side character explain yeah. something back, and they can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to explain this. Okay, well, let's have them and the sidekick just have a conversation yep. about what this is, and you can just take care of stuff that way. You know, worst yep. case scenario. So, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting dichotomy. It, it, it really is, and I. It's one that as a writer you struggle with, man. I mean, that's that's a deep question, by the way. I'm just throwing that out there because <laughs> there's so much out there, um, man, that you, you know, that you're, I'm a huge Jim Butcher fan, you know, I'm a Hunter fan. I'm a huge fan of Hunter Blaine stuff, obviously. Yeah. And the way everybody kind of writes their worlds, it's it's different, but, it, you know, I like how people put their own flair on it. Right. So I just hit it with a hammer and just see where it falls. So you know. <laughs> I think you so. do a little bit more than just hitting it with a hammer. Let's be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, so your next book in the Max Avedon series, Gates of Prediction. Do you do you know is that coming out? What November, December? Is that what the plan is? Or yeah, so I'm going to put the book on pre order pretty soon. Um, so it, it kind of ties to a couple of things. I'm trying to get better with seeking my audio books, obviously with the books. And Luke is actually doing the Descending World series, which he's one of the better like military sci fi guys out there. Yeah. He does Richard Fox's stuff, which is a great. Um, and literally, so he's going to be doing that. Uh, so I'm trying to hit a December time frame for the next Max Abaddon book. I mean, I'm like literally halfway through it, but, um, the one thing about non-traditional publication, when you go traditional is you have timelines, you have to be, you have to write a book by a certain right. amount of time. And, um, you know, I'm learning that world a little bit, 
So, and that's uh, maybe learning it some more. So, I mentioned Hunter earlier. You know, we've been working. We not been working. We have a lit RPG book that is just it's good. I think people read it and they're like, "What is this?" Yeah. We're like, yeah, <laughs> this is. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 uh it's coming to the end of the year. But it's um, I want to release little snippets of it throughout the year. When I'm getting yeah, you just released once... the chapter one, right? Was that from that was from the gates or, or from the yeah, yeah a portion of it? I did absolutely yeah. Um, go check it out I'm on Facebook. Pro- yeah, I did. I did. I'm going to release another, probably the second half of that chapter, probably in a week or so. It's all done. I mean, I'm halfway through the book, but I've got to, <laughs> I made the mistake of, we. Met, I was talking to you earlier about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So Rocket Raccoon is one of my favorite characters. And okay. obviously the third movie is such a, you know, it's kind of like an opus to him. You know what I mean? Um, Spoilers. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> oops. The, oops. um, I, I literally wrote a character that's kind of him, okay, but not him, just with him visually in mind. But I wrote this really, really good character. That's one thing I think I'm good at is writing characters. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, for sure. And I wrote this character that is literally Bo's Butler. That's a like a hairless raccoon that is just it's comedy fodder. And I'm just like I just I feel bad because I've got other you know other people to interject in the story. And I was like I keep I gotta stop writing this guy in here. <laughs> too easy. Um, you just have to do some side stories around. to get it out of your system. I, I know, and it's not none of these are spoilers, but he just chases Bo around and just rags on him the whole time. And he's his butler, and it's just I don't know. <laughs> it's worked out really good. Um, I, I think this next the book's kind of serious the way the last book ended, but yeah. I think this book's probably going to be probably one of the funniest ones I've written so far in the Max Avalon series because it is just uh, I don't know, it's it's different. So that's awesome. Yep. Last time we had you on the podcast again, I was. Like two years ago, I asked you a question. I said, <laughs> hey, are there any other genres? Because you were just doing Max Abaddon and The Sinking Man. And I go, are there any yep. other genres you'd like to write? And your exact words, and this is an I quote, you said, I suppose I'd love to do a opera, a space opera, military sci-fi, or maybe an RPG someday would be kind of cool. That's your exact words two years ago. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, here we I'm, are. We were yeah. just talking about Asher's Fall, right? Yep. And that's kind of a, a space oh, yeah. book, right? It's, it's pretty yeah. much exactly what you wanted to do. And then it you've is. got the lit RPG you're doing with Hunter Blade. So it's like, yep. you put that out in the world, and now two years later, those are coming out. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm a glutton for punishment, man. Um, <laughs> total glutton for punishment. The, you want to uh, tell us a little bit about those, those books? Yeah, I'll hit the lit RPG first, because I think it's it, its its own thing. Um so in Hunter's, obviously, you know, Hunter, he's such a, he's a brilliant mind, right? Yeah. He, he, um, people think I'm smart, but I'm just really organized, quite frankly, at the end of the day is really where it all boils down to, right? Um, but he's just such a brilliant writer. And when you co-author something with him, it's, it, it, it's interesting because we're friends, we're personal friends too. And so we're both totally cool with everything we write. And then we go back through it and we're like, we're trying to 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 meld this and it just works it's brilliant um it, it's such a weird weird uh mix but it's literally what happens with the real world beats um lit rpg world and things get all crazy and things happen but it's been such a good experience i mean to 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 see his writing process and and go through that with him it's um i feel like i'm catching up with him a lot of times cuz he's writing like in game stuff yeah. totally and i'm writing the world real world stuff yeah. and then we just polish it both up but the lit rpg um i can't talk too horribly much about it for certain reasons yeah, yeah, um yeah. <laughs> cuz it's yeah, literally don't... in somebody's hands right now i'm not out of our hands um but uh it's such a it's a extremely good run on lit RPG in a space where I don't think it's been worked on a lot. And we specifically did that. So we actually met with some pretty, you know, I think we were, we met with some pretty prolific lit RPG authors personally in, in person talking to them, you know, yeah. as well. Um, but, but it, it follows a couple of detectives and a world where video games in the real world kind of, um, you know, it's blurring the line a little bit, but it's not like Ready Player One right. or um, some of these other ones. It's a lot. It's different. It's own trust thing. Me. Which is it's great because it gives own it, thing. 
it's always good to have its own thing because then you set yourself apart from everyone else and then other people will start following in your footsteps when they're like i really like this i want to do yeah. stuff like that so yeah yeah and, and it's been a it, it's a good book it's going to be it will i'm saying about everything i write right <laughs> but it's um it's different and i think the genre is such an interesting genre to me um where hunter is such a video game guy um i get him too but a little bit different from a different from that perspective yeah and he has such good insight in it um <laughs> everybody's in for a surprise that's all i gotta say okay him and i write the book together and it is it's nuts it's I, a lot of fun because having sat down with the two of you uh like again we did that dead by daylight game and it was just fun watching the two of you interact even before you know the stuff that nobody else but me and you guys saw just yeah. the interaction beforehand where it wasn't stream people weren't live it was just being yeah. you hanging out with yeah. people uh yeah. it just was just ridiculous and a lot of fun and just a pleasure for me to just get to hang out and see you guys yeah. you know be friends yeah. and yeah. so yeah. i can yeah. only expect uh, awesome things from that book series because of course i love both of your guys' stuff so yeah it, it's uh it's super exciting but yeah i'll talk about the descending world series yeah, which is super yeah. cool so um i grew up on hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy um star wars guy obviously um i do uh i do watch star trek in the closet not gonna lie um everything you could possibly imagine um from from a military sci-fi book from a military guy mm -hmm is in this so it you know i think the recipe for sci-fi books and i think there's going to be a resurgence in this genre quite frankly my personal feeling is i think you're going to see a resurgence in the sci-fi genre coming up i just feel it in my gut it's one of those things where you're like you know it's like crypto you hear crypto ah and it's the coin and then later and then they're too late to buy it and right i'm listening or telling you i think sci-fi is making a comeback i think it's going to hit hard um but from my perspective, I literally, I can't speak enough how big of a fan I am of Douglas Adams and the Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy. And I didn't make this too gonzo. I was going to say, is this going to be really kind of silly and out there? Or is it going to be a little bit more serious? It's, mm, <laughs> it's, uh, it's interesting. It's a combination of the two. Um, I will say you meet a very interesting artificial intelligence, um, AI. Um, he called him. He calls himself Albert because he thinks Albert Einstein is one of the most probably smartest, maybe human people out there. Okay. Um, and the AI, and we also meet an. Uh, it's called an Allurian Warhound. Everybody will get to know what that is. His name is Sparky. Um, but it follows a group of Nova Space Rangers on a mission out into the void. Right, the galaxy is a big place. Everybody knows the galaxy is a huge place. Um, mind-boggling amount of stars but um you know the cosmos is massive right and you follow these people on the far stretches of the galaxy and what happens in a lot of humor i will say there is a lot of humor involved in it i'm not gonna lie <laughs> but it's a combination you get yeah. a lot of serious um you know military sci-fi hardcore military sci-fi and then you get a very good mix of a artificial intelligence that likes to watch dating shows from the early 2000s yeah hundreds of years later so well i'm always curious because like comparing you say yourself to hunter hunter has yep. a lot more silliness in like the preternatural chronicles and he can be very very serious as well but there's mm -hmm. a lot of silliness and you have silliness but the main characters and everything has a more serious back tone, even though there is silliness involved. Yeah. So it's like yeah. these two kind of reverse things. And I'm like, when I picture Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that feels like a more Hunter Blaine thing. But at the same yeah. time, I can really see you narrowing in and just nailing that kind of a, you know, that kind of a feel and putting a new twist on it. So I'm really excited uh, to see what comes up because yeah. I'm not, I'm not a huge sci-fi fan. Like I've done the first, what is it four or five books i think of the 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 douglas adams books yeah. and so i'm not it's acquired taste yeah it yeah. is but it's it's it, i enjoyed them they're fun so i'm really curious to see what you do because like you see the cover and it's very ominous and very serious and very sci-fi and really cool looking oh it is and yeah, knowing 100%. you as a writer uh and knowing your works i'm very interested to see what kind of a spin you put on it because your max abaddon series is completely different from the sinking man series like yeah. the feel of it is different like if i didn't know that you were the author i wouldn't be have guessed that it was written by the same person yep, yep. so 
and that's 100%. testament to you and your skills. So it's, it's I'm really excited yeah. for it. I'll oh, thank you. And I wrote it in the third person. So I was initially going to do it in the first person, but I was like, this is a journey of, uh, this is me being a military guy. So um, if people don't know I was in the army for quite some time. So the, the love me wall can probably contest to that. But literally um, when you're in a military setting, you're on a journey with a group of people. Yeah. Um, and I've spent multiple years overseas in combat deployments. And I looked at that and I sat back and I was like, you know, I really want to tell this guy's story. Um, it, you're going to get that vibe from the scene command series where it's third person, but you know, it's coming from somebody's perspective to yeah. an extent, right? You're following this main person. So, but that's really, that's really where I, where I took it. Um, it's, it's going to be a ride. I think people in the sci-fi military sci-fi people that follow the Max Abaddon series and, and the Sinky Man series are really, really going to love it. I pulled in, I, you know, you write a book and you're like, man, I should have been writing these for a long time. Right. And I'm writing it and it just flows and it flows and it flows and it flows. But, uh, it, it's going to be one of those series where it is, it does have a very serious vibe to it. The, the action scenes are absolutely, um, straight on you know they're 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 space combat scenes very kind of authenticated from experience yeah being around not space but things like that and uh but the brevity man absolutely um i couldn't i can't write a book and not have a joke in it i just can't do it i yeah. just i don't know so i don't take myself that seriously do you have to do a lot of like research stuff for like the tech and future thoughts or is it just because you watch so much sci-fi that it's pretty easy for you to make stuff so, up I can show you the pic the poster of the universe that I had, the galaxy that I had to get and spread out on my table and figure out that I wasn't at, like completely out of my mind when I was like I had to do research on like light speed and how parsecs work and quadrants and systems and you know how the the, the I actually learned a lot, believe it or not. Yeah. Um I learned that we're very small, <laughs> very small P on a lump of mashed potatoes, right? Right. Um I did. I had to do quite a bit of research, a lot of uh, nuclear fission reaction, space. I, I you want you want me to ruin every sci-fi movie ever for you, real quick? I mean, you can try. Totally obliterate it for you. you. Certainly try. <laughs> and, and, and everybody watching and listening. Okay. So you start looking at the dynamics of space, right? You start like, how would space combat work with TAC fighters and everything flying around, like you see in Star Wars, right? And then you start digging into it and you like start, and you really start looking at it and you're like, Star Trek, the ships are always the same and they're all like this at the same like level. And they're all like, not one's not sideways, you know, one's not coming this way. And they're all, it's very interesting when you start actually realizing what space combat would be, right? which it would be kind of boring. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Um, but it's interesting dichotomy. So you have to start, you almost make up technology. And I think that's where a lot of sci-fi authors really shine, right? Like Dune and, you know, a lot of those folks out there. Um, Cause you got to kind of, you literally have car blocks to make up your own way things are right. done. Right. Because if you literally start Googling it, not only is NASA and CERN going to show up at your house, <laughs> but it, it literally, you will sit there for three days. You'll be shivering, sweating, blanket over you'll be like oh space is no this isn't good you know it i literally did that for weeks trying to figure it out <laughs> um i'm making fun of myself literally but i did um and i'm like all oh, those movies none of that makes any sense right the millennium falcon couldn't really do that in space yeah when it twists it doesn't really twist it, it you know you try to put it all together and it just it ruins some of that for you yeah but you don't have to work like there's no gravity and all that kind of stuff so like how does it turn unless it's got like little thrusters on every single yeah there's no cardinal direction right so like for me i made up this thing called the the you know it, it's kind of like a level set navigation system where everybody has a certain point where they level their navigation kind of like oceanic right i mean navy ships um i sound a lot smarter than i actually am right now i just <laughs> Just Googled a lot of stuff, man. Um, That's what you gotta yeah, do when you're writing, you know. Especially if it's like you, if you don't yeah. know, you gotta learn. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I grew up. Um, I mean, I've spent a ton of times. I mean, I, I, I lived in Huntsville, Alabama, believe it or not, for a little bit around the Space Center. 
um, I've been around a lot of that kind of stuff uh, a lot. And I was just mind blown when you start doing research because you, you're like, you start writing and then you realize like, you know, most writers that I know are like this. Uh, a reader might not realize the effort that's put into um, actually uh, coming up with a really small scene sometimes. It can be nothing but a paragraph and it's literally like two or three days of the author's time. Yeah. Literally like, you chase rabbit holes like total rabbit. and i did when you write sci-fi trust me i respect newfound respect for minutes i've written sci-fi books by the way um and and anything with time travel or quantum physics man it's just mind boggling when you start chasing down but yeah. you know i'm the guy that you're going to be sitting beside at a bar one day and somebody's going to say something you'd be like oh by the way did you know that um if you were to travel the speed of light, they say it goes back in time, but that doesn't really work if you're in the quantum entanglement. But if you have a ship that has electromagnetic field on the outside, you could theoretically not have to deal with the time slip differential. And you're like, you're yeah. like, <laughs> Where did bro, I'm, calling, I'm calling the cops. Somebody buy me another drink. <laughs> buy him another drink. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's mind boggling. <laughs> um, but yeah, so to your point, yeah, it's, it's, um, the military stuff's easy to write, but yeah, anybody that reads the Descending World series is going to get the humor. It's it's just the whole thing. Um, it's woven in there. So. Do you have an idea of when that's going to be able to be available, or are you still? Yeah, so the uh, the first Astros Fall is going to be released in November, audiobook okay. as well. It's going to be on pre-order here pretty soon. So Podium uh, has graciously picked us up to do that series. So I've got a three book. Uh, so far, it's three books. We'll see where it goes from there, which yeah. I got a feeling everybody's going to really, really like it. Um, so it releases in November. The next book is, which I'm almost done with. I'm literally writing the last couple chapters right now. Okay. Um, it'll be released probably around February, March. And the third book, I haven't started writing yet, but probably early summer next year. So yeah, I have a release schedule already. So, so you're going to have to follow that schedule and get them all out there, huh? Yeah, but I did tell them I got to get Max done. I got yeah. Max work to do, so they know the whole fall is going to be kind of dedicated to get that next Max Abaddon book done, which is close. Um, I just really got to get that time. That the problem is my next Max Abaddon book, it's literally structured to be my longest yeah. <laughs> series almost, and I'm trying to pare it down a little bit. So we'll okay. see how that goes. I doubt I will. Let's do uh, let's do something a little. Sil I haven't done this before on the show. Let's do a little word association. I'll give you a. I'll give you a name of a, either mm -hmm. somebody you know, a person you know, or a character mm -hmm. of yours, and you give me like a a one word or a short sentence that just the first thing that kind of pops to your mind when you when you think of them. How's that sound? That sounds good. I'm gonna screw this up completely, but we're gonna. That's all right. It. That's all right. We're gonna start off easy. Jarrett Lamaster. Uh, brilliant. Brilliantly uh, unexposed. And then Ben from the Seeking Man series. <laughs> uh, ben from the Seeking Man series. I'm probably not supposed to contemplate these, are, am I? Um, it's supposed to be like kind of first thing that comes to your mind, but I mean, changing. Just drop on. Yep, changing. Yeah, changing. You have an author, you can think thing. Changing. Sarah? Ooh. Worried. Worried. Hunter Blaine. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Petro. My man. Max. Abaddon. Oh, man. In for a ride. Phil. <laughs> Along for the ride. <laughs> Tom. Mm. At the end of the ride. At the end of the ride. And last but certainly not least, Luke Daniels. The man. Period. The man, period. End of subject. Yep. Human. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You're gonna be coming up. Uh you're gonna be in uh Daytona, Florida on February twenty second through twenty fifth or for Coastal Magic Convention. Yeah. Yep, I will be. You said you had a fun story about that. And that you yes, wanted I to do. tell. So you should probably tell us that before I continue on. <laughs> you got how much time do I have to tell you? Got time. Go ahead. Okay. So um this is an interesting convention I noticed um a couple of years ago. 
and it's down in Daytona. And it seems to me like the majority of the authors down there are romance authors in the paranormal romance space. Right. (laughs) So um, I kind of stick out like a sore thumb. So I've been integrated into this group. They're amazingly great people. And um, I met a bloggist that I'm working with throughout this thing. It, it's a just a very interesting dichotomy. And they're literally like, you are the one person that stood out in this entire thing. And that's why I wanted <laughs> to work with you. Because you're not writing. I, 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 no, none of my, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Max he's a dude but he doesn't have his abs showing and there's not like water dripping down on him and his hair not all you know (laughs) um i don't know how else to put that um but literally i I probably have some of the least racy covers of the (laughs) books there (laughs) so it's it's interesting i could probably get more more um i get more conjecture about it but it's an interesting group of authors but they're like very very pinpointed on what they do and it's the one reason that it stood out to me where I was like, man, this is an interesting little con- convention. This isn't something I would usually do. And I reached out to the person that ran it. And I was like, hey, you, you know, just kind of walked them through my background, what I do, what I do, what it is. And they're just kind of like, okay. And they reached back out. And I was like, okay, I'm all over. I'm going to yeah. do it. It's going to be a blast. I am literally going to be down there. People are just going to be like, who? It, it was like when we were at Vegas at the 20 to 50K, Hunter and I were walking around. People were uh, probably not told this story. Um, you might not be aware of this. So we were walking around the 20 to 50 K convention in Vegas. People were walking up to us and be like, are you guys, who are you guys? You guys security? We're like, no, we're authors. We're writers. We're, we're like, we're, we're, (laughs) they're like, you guys don't look like authors. And we're like, oh, we're, (laughs) trust us. We're authors. It was just such a funny, funny thing, man. I could actually, I forgot about that. I could tell, I actually have a video collage that I need to post about that yeah yeah we need to get you to gen con too yeah yeah for sure yeah we need to man i want to get out um and it's always good to partner with people to do cons and stuff like that but more of those are coming in the future but yeah the magic it it seems like a really good convention actually i mean the authors there there's some really really good folks um they write again i think it kind of leans more on the romance paranormal romance magic kind of side of that but um that's really good. I actually read a couple of books. Like I took the time to go in and grab a couple of the authors and like start going. I was like, holy cow, yeah, these people are great. Awesome. Great portfolios. And the team there is like super excited about it. But yeah, so it's a new thing for me. But I might do a couple other cons coming up, but we'll see. So. Yeah, definitely we'll stay posted. And I'll uh, obviously I share all of your stuff on on Facebook when I can because yeah, I appreciate that's, it, that's what I do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, people yeah, can thanks. find you at justinlesley.com. Yep, you can find can. you on the Facebook backslash Max Abaddon Books or find your your group, Justin Leslie's Friends of the Fallen Angel Facebook group. So people go ahead and give all of the follows and click all of those things. And again, both of your books are going to be coming out pretty much right in the fall, November, December-ish. Yeah, November, December. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting couple months. We just got, I got to get to writing, get to moving. But yeah, Matt, uh, Luke should be, Luke Daniels is Reading the Descending World series, so I think he's gonna, gonna have it. a blast with that, especially based on what you've kind of told me about what the world is kind of like or how it's kind of built. I'm I'm very excited to to see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm trying not to give too much away, man. It's yeah. driving me crazy. Not <laughs> <laughs> you got it all trapped in there. It's like you got to leak it. You got to get it out. I've got the second book done, and the first one hasn't released. <laughs> so yeah, head's about to explode. Oh, that's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, listening, friends and enemies, heroes and villains, August 28th, we're going to be joined by young adult author Destiny, also known as D.L. Soria. Her books, such as The Iron Cast, Beneath the Citadel, and Fire and with Fire, are currently available. And her new book, The Thief Liar Lady, was just released in July. So join us out for that. August 28th is going to be <clears throat> August 28th is going to be the live stream show, or you can listen to it on podcast form on August 29th. So Thank you guys all for listening. Not to mention, we're going to be having Scott Innes coming up, the voice of Scooby-Doo, as well as author Rhett C. Bruno. So click all of the buttons, rate, review, follow, like, go and follow our guest, Justin Leslie. Thank you guys so much for being here, and thank you for listening to Epic Realms.